sounds so pretty. Well, howdy everyone. Uh, it's time to continue on. Soil series number nine is now coming your way. Uh, anybody who's gonna be watching this over the course of the next seven days, uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Um, it is December. Uh, ski season is fully upon us here in Utah. It's been absolutely stunningly gorgeous. A uh, lot of snow for you skiers out there. If you're planning on skiing uh, this season, you may want to come check out Park City. It's absolutely phenomenal. So, today I want to talk about limiting factors. Now, in an earlier video, uh, we talked about Liebig's Barrel, uh, the law of the minimum. Okay, this is going to tie in with that one. Um, and then sort of how to determine, even without a soil test, what could potentially be a limiting factor in your turf growth. Now, first of all, thank you everybody who's kind of sticking around through the winter time. There's not uh, a whole lot to talk to about, you know, when, when there's snow on the ground, and unless you live in Florida or, uh, you know, some other warmer coastal area. I mean, Phoenix, if I've got anybody out watching down there, maybe down in San Diego. Um, for most of us northerners, it's, uh, it's a time where we get to either really enjoy the winter or just really anticipate springtime. So here in my backyard, uh, I've got about 16 inches. I, I did a little walk back through there today uh, into the back part of the property. So, you know, we're, we're fairly covered up, which means, you know, microbes are asleep. Uh, there is not much happening under the soil. We are frozen. Uh, so everything is resting. The snow is forming a great insulating layer out there and it's gonna just be that way now for the next few months. So here's where I wanna go with this and I want everybody to kind of think back on their season, uh, on the results of any products they were using, um, whether good or bad, and, and just kind of process through this uh, exercise with me. Now, one of the things that I talk to a lot of professionals about is if you ever have a lawn uh, where you apply a product that's the same as everywhere else, if you have a, a tank mix of something that you're applying on say 30 customers during the day and you have one piece of property that doesn't respond, uh, there is a good indicator that there is a singular limiting factor in there. So you can take a look through even without a soil test, walk through the history of what's been applied to your property or to a property that you're servicing and identify a limiting factor very quickly. Now, there are uh, bits of information that you can find about your soil types in your area uh, through ag extensions and things like that. If you really wanna dig deep into it, obviously sending in for a soil test is a great uh, idea. Now, I want to be clear yet again, you'll hear me state this over and over and over again. Uh, soil testing should be used to solve a problem more than create a program. If you're just looking to create a program, there is countless uh, amounts of information out there for you that you can just put together an NPK program and just be perfectly happy. Well, if you go beyond and NPK is no longer your friend, meaning you're putting it out and nothing is happening. It's time to look into those other elements that may be missing from your program. Now, we talked about calcium, we talked about magnesium, we've talked about sulfur, we've talked about nitrogen, phosphorus, we've gone kind of through the whole thing. So let's just kind of jump back into the beginning and I will establish what I would give you as the most important advice to a program as far as dealing with a limiting factor. So in the law of the minimums with Liebig's Barrel, we established that uh, whatever the least amount of nutrient that is available will basically regulate whatever's the most. So there's a hole in the boat, you got to patch the boat before you can move on. So that's where we're going to go with this, but without even having to do soil tests. So Let's say you've been running a very standard program for uh, a number of years, whether you're using uh, just a standard NPK mix, whether it's organic, whether it's whatever. Um, you can run on that for a while because as a general rule, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the big three are going to be what is calculated out as the most 
limited factor of growth. Now nitrogen being number one. So that's why a lot of soil tests don't even bother uh, looking at that number because it's traditionally the biggest limiting factor. So they just go ahead and throw it in. So recommend for your turf type four pounds a year. That's just what it is. Now we've gone through those rates and, and I, I know you might hear me just, it's like beating a dead horse because I do bring these things up. But I really want people to get it. If you're treating your lawn like a crop, that four pounds makes sense. If you're trying to treat it like a beautiful piece of landscape, you don't need to go that high. There's no reason. You can actually calculate out through the season, running with your minor elements and your uh, major elements, your macros, you can just kind of balance it out through the season. So it is a good dose of everything that creates the most robust soil and therefore plant, which also helps with opening up and drainage and root growth and everything goes along when you find balance. So let's talk about that limiting factor. Now I was looking at some soil tests and I had a conference call yesterday morning with a customer of mine, been a customer for a number of years and um, they sent me some soil tests back in February and we kind of looked at them and made some suggestions about that. I will be getting uh, new copies of, of the same properties in January to take a look at, to do a comparison. But in looking at their soil tests and seeing how things are, their limiting factor was potassium. Now, potassium is going to regulate uh, cell de development of water and help facilitate nitrogen uptake and all of those things. So when K starts to get really low, and, and these soils were very, very low, this is a, a actually an acidic sand, okay? So the CECs are extremely low, extremely low and a high amount of hydrogen. So we're dealing with a, a very well-drained soil that's very tied up, which means water is really flushing through that quickly. So K is going to be very important to help regulate the, the uptake to the root. So we wanna make sure that we get that in there. But if you look at the chart and you follow across this soil test, K is way down here and everything else is kind of running in a midline. So we know that we're gonna to have to bring that up in order to make sure that all of these other nutrients are functioning properly. So one thing you can take a look at very simply is uh, without a soil test, again, as you take a look at your history and say, I've applied N, P, K, S, F, E, I've done all of these uh, nutrients, but I'm missing some of my other uh, minor elements. I haven't applied calcium, I haven't applied magnesium, um, I haven't applied copper, boron, molybdenum, I haven't done any of those other things. So it might be important to start to feather those in to your program just because they've not been there before. Now, this is what back going to if you put something out on your lawn and nothing happens. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two scenarios here. So if you put something out on your lawn and nothing happens, that means that you've hit a threshold with what you've been applying to where it can no longer be uptaken by the plant because there's something else either in its way or not available to facilitate the uptake. So it's one or the other. So that's when you're gonna to wanna to look back and say, okay, what have I missed? So this goes into that whole thing about there aren't really any miracle products, there's just plugging holes. So you could go back and say, well, I haven't applied any minor elements in two or three seasons, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some microgreen out there at a little bit of a heavier rate, six, nine ounces, 10, you know, whatever you went with, and you kind of flush that down into the soil, suddenly you get this sort of spurt of growth because anything that hasn't been used from your prior NPK apps or whatever it was that you were putting out, now is suddenly going to become available. You've created an opening into the plant, the soil is now working with the extra material that's there and it's going to absorb into the plant and you'll see that. So it's not necessarily that you applied miners and miners made it grow, you applied miners to fill in the hole and your NPK made it grow, okay? So that's one side of things. So seeing your lawn, paying attention to it and knowing, okay, well, I've been applying this, Nothing is happening anymore. Now I need to switch it up a little bit and move into some other fill in elements, okay? So then there's the flip side of that. There's people who say, well, now I've seen, uh, you know, this, this incredible growth in color by applying these minor elements, I'm just going to keep doing it. And so they do that for a while. And they're applying and applying and applying. Well, eventually the same thing happens now. You've got a, uh, the same result where you're applying and nothing is happening and 
you have switched the tables to saying I've neglected the NPK and now that's back to my limiting factor, okay? So those are kind of the important things. If you live in an area where you have highly acidic soils, if you're in a heavy clay uh, and you're not applying lime or you haven't for a number of years, you could end up having an issue there either from pH now limiting your uptake, so not having a good soil buffer, and the only other way around that is to really build up OM. Soil humus will buffer in a wide range of pHs. So the higher your organic matter, the more buildup that you can get in there will actually help to buffer and release nutrients over time. So that's super, super important, which obviously for the last year, you know, what have we been talking about? Is soil carbon, root mass growing plants healthier because we're actually buffering the soil better. That means any herbicides you put out, even insecticides, uh, any, any other chemical or fertilizer that goes down, that organic matter has the opportunity to process and release it in a more efficient matter than soil that has low organic matter, okay? So those are the things that you should be thinking about coming up in the springtime. Now, if you didn't get a good dose of in out in cool season grasses at the end of this year, you're probably gonna wanna do that right out of the gate um, if you missed it. Now, if you ran out with the rates and you, you went ahead and applied before uh, the grass went dormant, when it's snowy and deep out there, that nitrogen is not going anywhere. It's just sitting and it will be ready for springtime. You're gonna be able to come in over the top of that with a low rate, maybe it's a half pound of in. If, you know, I never really recommend much more than that. Bring everything out in the springtime and you're going to have just the absolute most beautiful grass. Now, just be thinking along those lines of what have you not applied, it's very important, what have you not applied? Make sure you get that into your program. Come spring, just go ahead and get it out there right away. So anything that you haven't been applying, get it out there. It'll make a huge difference in establishing your turf for the 2019 spring. So I just wanted to do that. Wanted to share it with you, uh, get this out there. And just for a special treat here, um, little little holiday music. I doubt I'll be posting any videos over the Christmas holidays with family and everybody coming into town. So, uh, you know, look for me in the new year and, you know, with all the travel and Real Green Solutions coming up and uh, at the end of the first week of January, that's going to be very busy. Uh, the uh, FPMA Winter Expo will be coming up um, in the third week of January, the Loncology Summit happening in Orlando in the third week of February, it's going to be pretty busy. Um, in the, and really spring is on us just like that. So there you go. But on the way out tonight, today, this morning, whatever time it is when you're watching this, uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of this, just a, a little holiday classic. Here you go. Dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the tree tops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow I Dreaming of a white Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your day be merry and may all your Christmases be white. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I'll see y'all real soon. <laughs>